There you go. Hey, I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open. It's that live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. You can stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guest is the United States National Youth Poet Laureate, and she's with us today to speak about her passion for poetry and so much more. So please welcome to the show, Stephanie Pacheco. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hi, hi. I'm so happy to be here. I have all of your family records yes. and all that stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> Eddie Pacheco. Yes. Johnny Pacheco. Right, all yeah, of them. All of them. <laughs> so listen, you've been doing this for some time, huh? Yes, I have for many years now. But you, this is the first time on the show, right? Um, I was able to do um, a quick interview online during COVID a little oh, while okay. back. It was my yeah. first time in the studio here yeah. kicking in with y'all, so I'm All excited right. to be here. So since you're here, we have this initiation process. Mm -hmm. here. Okay. Should we do it? They didn't tell you about no, it. No, they did didn't they? tell me about this. Are you a little skeptical or I'm, worried? Or I'm on the edge frightened? of my seat. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <it's all> <laughs> so listen, give us, take us to the beginning. How did you uh, become interested in... Uh, Poetry. So I was always interested in reading and writing um, and using like literature and words to kind of escape to a different world. But yeah. um, my interest for creative writing kind of started peaking around middle school when I mm -hmm. would be getting these, you know, like poetry assignments and my English classes and that kind of thing. And I realized that I really enjoyed writing. Uh -huh. um, but it wasn't until I got to high school and I got involved in like activism, student advocacy and that kind of thing that I realized that my poetry could be used for something good. I could use all those stories that I was telling to um, uplift my community, to talk about things that I cared about and to, and to create action um, towards mm. what I wanted to see in the world. Yeah. Um, and also like, I can't talk about like my interest in poetry without talking about like where I'm from. Like where you being from? Where from, you from? I'm from the South Bronx. South Bronx, South Bronx. <laughs> Here we go now. And I mean, I've always been surrounded by music, uh -huh. by storytellers. Like I talk often about like you know lunch lunch table beatboxing and yeah, ciphers yeah. and you know <laughs> like when I w I was always around people who would gather together and just start telling stories and singing and rapping and you uh -huh. know all of that. So all this creativity was always around me. So it it was like I was kind of innately pushed yeah. to, to poetry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you started putting it together, was it about the community? Was it about your family? Was it about the things around you that you were growing up in? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like when people think about poetry, they think about you know how personal it can get. And that's yeah. absolutely true. A lot of people write poetry and, and they write about themselves and their emotions and yeah. use it to look inward. And then maybe down the line, they start talking about the world around them. But for uh. me, it happened the opposite way. Like my first poems were about every Everything that was happening outside of me. Mm -hmm. It was about my community. It was about what was happening around the country. And then, like, getting in the practice of that is what allowed me to then, you know, learn how to talk about myself and my identity and my, my lineage, my family, all of that. But what came first was me looking up and writing mm -hmm. what I saw. How did it feel when you became a youth poet laureate? <sighs> my Woo! gosh. Woo! It is an honor beyond what I can conceptualize, like uh -huh. it is such an honor to hold a title like being the United States Youth Poet Laureate um, and to be able to take those same stories that I've always been telling and now share them on a national platform. And something that I always hold with me is that anytime that I'm on any stage, that I get any title, any position, it doesn't belong to me like uh -huh. it doesn't it's not mine to hold on my own every time that I walk into any stage any time that I share any poem I I bring everyone who came before me with me I bring my whole community with me I bring yeah. all of our ancestors to every space that I'm in so it's such an honor to hold a title like this and I'm happy to say that it's not an honor that I hold on my mm. own and you bring a lot from the Boogie Down BX, right? Always. I mean, how could I not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, all the all the music, all the all the love that, that I was raised mm -hmm. around finds its way into everything that I do. And I think that's an important narrative for me to tell. Like, a lot of people think about a place like the South Bronx and they think about the things that we don't have or, like, the things that are maybe taken away from us. But I always think about my community and I think about everything we did have. Like, yeah. all all the all the laughs that I've shared in my community, all the all the people that banded together to raise me and all the kids yeah. 
kids yeah, on the block. Yeah. Like I think about all the abundance that we did have. We were abundant in love. We were abundant in in you know keeping survival tactics you know in in, in our back pockets. And um, that's something that I always hold with me, and it, it finds its way into my art, and yeah. I, I keep it. You not only represent the youth, you're mm -hmm. representing young adults now too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you would tell our youth uh, in knowing where you came from and knowing how people want to get to where you are? Mm -hmm. um, I'd say, and this is something that poetry and art has taught me, and it's to, to have courage to do things even if you're scared. Like I remember the first time that I went up in front of a crowd to share a poem and I was Ooh. terrified. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Like I was holding, you know, the printed version of my poem. I was shaking. I'm like, I don't know if I could do this, y'all. But the second that I said that first word and, and, and I started speaking, even though I was afraid, it was like the world opened up to me, you yeah. know, like the 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 audience that I was speaking in front of was ready to receive me. And I, in order to, to meet them where they were, to, to, to connect with them in that moment, like, yeah. I, I had to do it even if I was afraid. So that's something that I, you know, I would tell younger me. That's something that I remind myself every day now. Um, and it's something that I would share to other young people. Like, it's scary to, to do art. It's scary to, to tell your story. It's scary to do a lot of things, but you got to do it anyway yeah, because yeah. all the most beautiful things you can experience will be on the other side yeah. of that fear. It's even more frightening if you didn't prepare before you got there. Mm -hmm. So talk about some of the things that you have to do in order before, before you even have to come out on stage and let people know what you've been practicing. Ooh. Deep breaths, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of deep breaths, a lot of deep breaths. Um, I've, you know, been able to, to practice like the art of grounding myself before I go out and do those scary things. Uh. But what I've noticed is that these days, like by the time that I'm, you know, getting ready to walk up to that microphone or walk up to the Bronx Net, you know, TV studio, like all of that that anxiousness that I might feel, I, I try to leave it at the door. Mm -hmm. um, and by the time that I get here, that I get to that mic, that I get to the stage, I try to sit with the gratitude of the fact that I even get to do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I sit with the gratitude of, again, all the people that have come before me that have made space for me to, to do the things that I do. I sit in that gratitude, I sit in that love and in that joy, and I try to transmute that into all the words that I say. And that, that, yeah. that and the deep breaths, you know, <laughs> gets me through the, through the scary things. <laughs> doing it over and over and over again you <laughs> yeah. can't just say all right I'm gonna oh, oh I know all about this before I get out there mm -hmm. because that can be more frightening than anything mm -hmm. else oh wow I don't know what to say <laughs> yes you do because you went over it mm -hmm. like a baseball player he throws that uh, if, if it's a pitcher he's throwing those strikes and trying to throw practice on seeing how that ball curves in there right he's doing it over and over and over and mm -hmm. over and over again Mm -hmm. So that when he gets to the mound, he knows exactly what he wants to do. He knows the, the batters that are coming up too. That he <laughs> yeah. has to do. So you, you have to do some of the same thing, right? Before you jump on stage or yeah. before you jump in front of a camera. Yeah. Poems and writing take a lot of practice. Yeah. They take a lot of intention. Um, and I, I do a lot of that. Like before, you know, a poem is ever, yeah. you know, met with a stage, like you got you to gotta do a lot of thinking, a lot of sitting with yourself. You got to do the writing and the drafts of all all of it and especially like if you're someone who loves performing and you know that's something that you use to connect with people like performing takes a lot of practice as well but it's such a labor of love like I yeah. love being able to sit with the stories that I'm gonna tell I love being able to write and to and to do that kind of practice it's a really like sacred thing to do so mm. it does take a lot of that before getting to any microphone to any platform yeah. but it really is something that's very joyful yeah and mm -hmm. it's not as scary as it used to be right it's still you still have yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But not like it like when you first started. No, out there. no, no. Now like I get excited to perform. Like yeah. I I tell people all the time that a lot of the time I feel my freest on stage in front of a whole bunch of people. So I, you know, there's still sometimes some, some angst that I got to shake off, but I feel very comfortable on stage and I'm always very grateful yeah. to be able to do what I do. Stephanie, what are some of the stories that you talk about? Mm. What st stands out? Yeah, so they all stand out, but you know, mm -hmm. one or two. So I, 
Um, I, again, I, I started off writing about my community, and that's still something that I do. Yeah. The poem that I was able to share at the National Youth Poet Laureate Commencement in D.C. at the Kennedy that's the Center. One you used? Yeah, 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 yeah. I use, it, it was a poem about being from the Bronx. Um, but the thing is, like, I realized that even though my like my stories are rather local, like the, the the poems are very much happening on my block. You know uh. what I'm saying? Like that's that's what what the story is. I realize that those personal, those local stories are what resonates with a large audience. Yeah. Like maybe yeah. not everybody's going to identify the, with it. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. maybe not everyone's from the Bronx, but everybody knows what it's like to to have a song that you hear and it reminds you of of a place or it reminds mm. you of a feeling or it makes you feel like home. Um, everybody has, you know, people in their community that they look to and lean on that you're like, you know, if I go this place, I know I'm going to see this person and, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be that. Like everyone might not be exactly where I'm from, but people know what I'm talking about because everyone right. has a place that they call home. Right. So I, I keep telling the story of the Bronx because it's, it's a story for all of us to share. Um, and also like to the point that I was making earlier, like talking about the Bronx, talking about how being from the Bronx, you know, teaches me so much about the world and, you know, mm -hmm. how the local is national it's also allowed me to get language to look inward so I find my poems also like you know uh, going into you know family lineages and into and into you know unpacking histories and into allowing me to unpack my identity mm -hmm. um, I speak a lot about being someone who is black and Latina at the same time and you know poetry has allowed me to navigate that poetry has wow. also allowed me to talk about you know make commentary on what's happening in the world and in the country. And, you know, it reminds me to dream bigger and broader than what currently is. And also, you know, hopefully allows the same for other people. So it's a lot of stories that I get to tell through my words. Yeah. And you're a CUNY student also. Yes, yeah. I am a CUNY student. Still I doing it. Still there doing it. Go. Still a CUNY student. Um, and it is such an honor to be a CUNY student. And especially like being on a national platform and being able to be a CUNY student, I think is so, so important because, you know, people think of, you know, a prestigious title like being a National Youth Poet Laureate and they they match it maybe to like, a, a school that they might think is like traditionally prestigious, you uh, know, uh, you know, a, a fancy private school or what have you, but like really, CUNY is a prestigious institution. Yeah. Like we, CUNY has brilliant students, has so much talent. I've gotten the chance to meet some of the most amazing people ever, some of, some of the most beautiful souls uh -huh. through the CUNY system, like in these, these rockin' public schools here in New York City. And I think it's so important for people to see that, yes, the United States Youth Poet Laureate is a girl that goes to a community college. Yeah, like that's yeah. important to see. And I'm so honored to just be like, to, to provide people just a glimpse of all the, the beauty that the CUNY system has. So I am a CUNY student and it's something that I don't feel shame about. I'm very proud of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, are we gonna do something? Uh, you, are you going to perform a little so, like, <laughs> <laughs> so I think what we decided to do was cut to a clip of the poem that I got you to share. You want to cut to the clip? I think we can cut to a clip. Got a little snippet of it. Yeah. yeah. A little, little high-def footage. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll hold that for a yeah, hot second. Yeah, we'll hold that I, for a little second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. But... Yeah. Um, I, I do get to perform, you know, that poem that I did for that, for that commencement where I had the honor of being titled the National Youth Poet Laureate. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think about what that moment was and, you know, to get the National Youth Poet Laureate title, it is technically, you know, there are levels of a competition that, you know, folks yeah. have to go through in order to get a title, um, like a youth poet laureate, but I never think about, like, the competition itself. That's never what it's been for me. Like, it's always been, you know, getting the, the pleasure of, again, being able to share stories that are near and dear yeah. to my heart, mm -hmm. being able to represent my community on different levels, and also being able to meet young people from all across the country that otherwise I wouldn't cross paths with. Like, yeah. I've sat in rooms with people from, you know, states in the Midwest, and and they yeah. said in the third and we get to chop it up and talk about, you know, the things that matter to us. And I've been able to realize that I have so much in common with people that are from completely different places that, you know, are from completely different backgrounds. But we're united over our love for art and for language. Um, and that's a really beautiful thing to experience. When you won the award, what some of the things what's some of the things that you had to do um, to advocate for 
the work that uh, you were involved in. Mm -hmm. Like so, when you become a beauty pageant, you have to do a year of going around and yeah. going to different countries. Yeah. What, what did you have to so do? So a little bit of insight into like the process of becoming a National Youth Poet Laureate. So um, the Youth Poet Laureate title exists on a whole bunch of different levels. There are local Youth Poet Laureates, there are regional Youth Poet Laureates, and then there's a the National Youth Poet Laureate. Mm -hmm. So before I was able to, you know, have this, this national platform, I... Um, I went through the process of competing for the New York City Youth Poet Laureate, and I was able uh -huh. to hold that title. Yeah. Um, and then I got the chance to be the inaugural New York State Youth Poet Laureate, the first ever, which was crazy. Um, and then that allowed me to qualify to become a regional Youth Poet Laureate for the Northeastern region, which made me finalist for the National Youth Poet Laureate. In each of those levels, essentially, mm -hmm. um, those you know competitions are really just. Um, like seeking to find young people that are interested in both poetry and activism. Like that's what a Youth Poet Laureate title is about. Like, yeah. you know, celebrating and acknowledging the intersection between art and activism. Beautiful. So for each level, like, you know, I, I, you know, had to submit some poems, you know, you know, do, do the writing, uh -huh. do the performing, but also like I had to talk about the things that I was doing in my community and like the ways that I was involved in activism and advocacy and volunteering and all that good stuff, because that's important too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we got to write the poems that are talking about, you know, all the things that we want to see, but we also got to, you know, put some advocacy and some action behind it. Yeah. So you came all the way up to that point and then bam, we went to this picture right here. How did you feel? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that day was crazy. It was such an electric feeling. This picture uh -huh. was Oh my gosh, that's me <laughs> with, the, with the previous National Youth Poet Laureate, just uh -huh. sitting in such awe. I mean, that room was on fire. Like, What was the feeling like? I still can't even fully describe it. Like, I was obviously in awe of the uh -huh. moment. I was, like, feeling every possible emotion, like... I, I was looking into the audience and seeing people that had followed me through my poetic journey all the way up until that moment. I mean, I was overwhelmed with joy, with, I mean, I, I still can't fully describe the feeling, but the energy in the room was so bright. It was so, like, the cheers were so loud. It felt like the you had only... your cheering section, your friends and family. <laughs> right, yeah, like them. all the folks in my community, like, and even the people who didn't know me, who were just meeting me just there, you, like, yeah. people were just happy to be there, happy to see someone, to see, a, you know, a whole bunch of young people get to experience uh -huh. a moment like that. Like, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautiful. Now... Where do we go from here? Oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> I I don't know that I had a plan to become a poet. I don't know that I had, you know, five years uh -huh. ago. I don't know that I could have pointed you to, to where I'm at now. So really, I like to, you know, keep that kind of, you know, I, I'm openness for what's coming next. Like, yeah. I'm... I, I'm letting the poetry guide me. I'm letting the poetry lead me. Um, I'm I'm still wrapping up, you know, my my English degree as a uh -huh. CUNY student. So that's coming next. Uh -huh. um, as a national poet laureate, I get to perform at a whole bunch of different venues. Uh, you know, I they're get calling to, on you, huh? Yeah, you know, <laughs> there's always a need for poetry, and I'm always honored to answer that call. So I'm excited to keep performing. I'm excited to keep, you know, visiting schools and that kind of thing, getting connect, getting to connect directly with other young people. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to, you know, teach poetry workshops and teach people all that I've learned through my time writing. Um, so what's next is what I'm already doing, and hopefully getting the chance to keep telling those same stories of my neighborhood. Of, of, of myself and my community keep seeing how far that can go and how many people will be able to resonate with that. Stephanie, let's go to this video. And yes, check let's it out. check it out. Yeah, here mm. we go. <laughs> the Hood Kids magic vessel into Wonderland. We made steel poles our enchanted forest, wished upon the stars of its lights, and tapped our feet to the sound of the underground roar. We say, the most Bronx trip you could attend was the Bronx yeah. Zoo. <laughs> was the one that was cheapest for the school budget. Was the one that all of our mommies could afford. Was the other place where caged beings live. Say, the mark of nativity is watching other things in capture. Is being a witness to the cage.
Yeah, yeah. what do you think? The crowd went crazy. After mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, people gave me a lot of energy to feed off of, and, and I'm yeah. glad I was able to give it back to them. You were like a rapper because you had a DJ behind you, too. Right? Yeah, in a way, yes. <laughs> yes, in fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's he, he was able to give you a beat every now and then? <laughs> I mean, we had some, you know, musical transitions and whatnot, but the poetry was kind of standing <laughs> on its own that day. But, hey, there's no denying the connection between poetry and hip-hop. So in some uh, ways, I was doing a rap of sorts yeah, yeah, <laughs> at yeah, the Kennedy it. Center. Yeah, you know, rap and poetry, <laughs> it, it goes hand in hand. Like yeah. Hand in the glove. Mm -hmm. Now, people wanted to contact you to come to their school to teach, to do poetry, or to get you to come anywhere across the country social media website yes absolutely so i'm always so honored to connect with people always so open for for anywhere that poetry is needed um, i'm on social media um at the stephanie pacheco pretty much on anything um people can reach out to reach out to me through there and i'm always always so happy to to keep sharing all the love that poetry has given me are you related to the Pachecos? Um, I, I every, maybe you never uh, maybe, know. Right? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Everywhere I turn, there's 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 a new Pacheco that I gotta learn about. So yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe I got a cousin out there that maybe writes some poems too. Yeah, Johnny Pacheco, Latina, <laughs> you know, la Latino playing music. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Well, listen. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Thank you so Good much. Good luck in everything that you do. Thank you. And do your thing in school. Always. Take care of business, and we will see you out there on stage somewhere. Yup, somewhere, somewhere. And yes. come back again on TV. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. You. Bob Lee. Thank you, Bronxnet. It's always an honor. You got it. Stephanie <laughs> Pacheco, poet, United States National Youth Poet Laureate. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with more right here on Open.